Hello and welcome to all of our gold viewers who are here with us today. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and one of the MCs here. And today I am chatting with Summer Friedman. Hi, Summer. It's so wonderful to see you back here at Gold again. Hi, Kristen. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Well, Summer, you have a pretty exciting presentation this time here at Gold, at the Gold Lactation Online Conference of 2024. You have a two-hour presentation, an interactive presentation. Are you excited, Summer? <laughs> excited and other things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so your topic, of course, is titled The Evolution of Lactation Aids from Nipple Shields to Silicon Collection Cups and Beyond. I know many of our viewers are super excited because tools, uh, something that many of the um, their clients are using, right? And uh, it always leads to big discussions and uh, lots of curiosity, lots to learn. New things are coming out every um, every month. <laughs> it feels like, right? So uh, first of all, but before we jump into all that, let us know a little bit about yourself, Summer, before we uh, go into the topic itself. Oh, sure. Um, let's see. I myself breastfed. Uh, all of my boys. And that's really what triggered me to be interested in becoming a lactation consultant uh, was my, the birth of my first son. And I had this really uh, nice way to put it, a uh, poorly educated lactation mm. consultant um, trying to support me in maybe the only way she could. And it was not great support for me. And it was in that moment that I knew that there must be something better than that. And there must be better skilled practitioners out there. And I wanted to become one of them. <laughs> so I, my path completely switched and um, I became a La Lecha League leader uh, about, I guess, maybe five years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe less. It doesn't matter. Uh, and the practice as a La Lecha League leader uh, for five years, I still am. But that's what qualified me to be able to sit for the boards. And then I sat for the um, boards for lactation consultant and passed <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, have been practicing there since 2010 and worked mm -hmm. inside a level three NICU and a mother baby unit for about nine years and then transitioned out to private practice where I've been since 2019, where I go to families' homes, and then do telework all over the world as well. Beautiful. Well, thank you for sharing that with us here. It's always nice to know the background of our speakers here. So let's uh, get into the topic about uh, lactation aids. You did extensive, uh, you know, looked into the matter and did a little research as well, seeing how old these uh, lactation aids are. Were you surprised to see how long, you know, the humans have been using tools, so to speak? Yeah, I think and it was um, fascinating to see all the different types of um, uh, how they basically moved into needing these tools mm -hmm. and with the, um, the things that they had around them, you know, such like stone and figuring out what they could make with stone that might help this baby that's having trouble breastfeeding mm -hmm. and thinking, wow, they were really trying very hard and just completely failing these mothers because they didn't have access to the kind of materials that we do now. So, and just moving into all the different tools that are out there, it's really overwhelming. I mean, until <laughs> yes. you're really thinking yes. about doing a presentation, like I'm overwhelmed. I don't mm -hmm. even have, you know, children that are in this stage anymore. And I mm -hmm. can't imagine you know, the deluge of all the products that mm -hmm. are out there when my kids were young, which was, you know, 20, 15 and 20 years ago, and we were nursing. Right. And I can only imagine also in your practice, right, in these years and years of practicing, how has your use of lactation tools changed? Was there ever a time when you go like, oh, this is cool, I'm using every tool <laughs> that you could find? Or has this always be a steady flow? How, how has your use uh, changed? Or has it changed at all? That's a great question. Um, I think being that I was raised and kind of born as a lactation, as a La Leche League leader, which tends to be a little more hands-off, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And, and the base of La Leche League leaders is, you know, the trust of the body Mm. and the trust of the baby. So I think because I was raised there, that's brought me to the kind of lactation consultant that I am, that I tend not to utilize just all the tools and reserve the tools for, you know, maybe the last resort is the wrong way to put it, but when it's actually really needed as opposed to just because it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Probably most specifically would be the nipple shield because in the, you know, in the early 2000s, that was looked at as being just the worst tool and it will devastate breastfeeding. And then all that we've learned since then that there are times when it's appropriate. And that was kind of when I started to implement them more as a lactation consultant than when I was a La Leche League leader, because we knew more about them, yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you know? So, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely more on the market than is necessary. Mm -hmm. which is a confusing part of it for families and us. It makes it challenging. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? I mean, it's a huge, it's a business, right? It's a big business. And when new parents are um, uh, desperate because they want to feed their baby, they see uh, all these tools and, uh, you know, they jump onto the opportunity to think like, this is, this tool will help me. No, this tool will help me, you know? So it's a, it's a big business, right? Um, what do you do as a lactation consultant? If you, if you get a call from a client and, and you go there and you, you see all these different tools and gadgets that you're using and you really, really <laughs> how do you approach that? Because, you know, I mean, these these people have spent so much money you don't want to just say like oh this is all nonsense you know how do you approach them <laughs> well I guess that would depend on the kind of rapport right. I have with the mm-hmm. with the patient which at times they're repeat patients so the rapport yeah. is there and I can maybe and maybe be a little more blunt but um I think you have to first build the rapport and mm-hmm. take an assessment of everything that's out there um and work through how they feel about it, how they feel things are going, you know, what has been useful, what have they seen, um, really asking more questions than anything. And Mm -hmm. because once you get that from them, you're going to know how you can navigate what is useful and what isn't and how to be able to share that information. I think Mm -hmm. um, it makes me it's sad really because Mm -hmm. these families are so interested in making this work which is amazing the Mm -hmm. sad part is that it feels quite predatory yeah absolutely all the stuff that they willingly will purchase because they're in a vulnerable hormonal state Mm -hmm. and they want it to work and this might be that Mm -hmm. you know that magic piece where everything comes together um And really, they could have saved quite a bit of money um, in these people that have more disposable income. We see more often the use of all these apparatus Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, more often than not, are probably not necessary, at least as often as they are sitting in people's Mm -hmm. homes. And not only not necessary, some can have uh, serious drawbacks, possibly even if affect milk supply and so on. Can you talk about a little bit about that, that um, they're not just like, oh, you know, yeah, just don't, don't use them, but also, you know, for prolonged use, there can also be some drawbacks with that, with these tools, right? Absolutely. Um, and they don't know that. Mm-hmm. So they of don't. course yeah. the, you know, the marketing aspect of all of this is that they work and it will solve all your problems. <laughs> and of course it would not behoove the company to talk about the drawbacks mm-hmm. and, you know, there are risks to these products, many of them, and there's benefits and what outweighs, you know, which one is kind of where we fall, where we have to inform the patient, the parent, um, you know, yes, you want to sleep a little bit longer, but here's what's going to happen if you do that. Like, Mm -hmm. I appreciate that you want to sleep longer. Let's talk about what might happen if you do that tonight. And then you can make your decision informed. Informed. Because that's right. Like the informed consent of it is getting someone's opinion that that isn't financially linked to the the purchase of this item. Um, 
And where did they get the information from? A friend, mm -hmm. a family member? Um, was it, you know, on social media that media. they said mm -hmm. this? Um, but um, yeah, there's absolute risks to these things that can um, negatively impact it. And sometimes it can negatively impact milk supply, meaning reduce or overproduce. Like those are mm -hmm. both problems, yep. making Absolutely. too much milk and making too little milk. And it's not as benign as these, these companies might make it. Um, they can do damage and have results that we could fix or not mm -hmm. fix, you know? So, yeah. So let's talk one more time here about the presentation. So you yeah. will show us quite a few, or we can walk us through quite a, quite a few tools. It's a two-hour presentation. So Summer, tell us a little bit what you hope our viewers will take away from, from attending the presentation. Yeah, I do. I walk through, um, I, there was a table at one point when I was looking at building my presentation <laughs> full of all of these gadgets. And I had to take a moment and be like, settle down because <laughs> like I'm naturally anxious being postpartum and anxious. So kind of looking at all of them mm -hmm. and I like people to come away with an understanding of all of the products that are out there and how to be able to use them in a responsible way so that we can continue to um, support these families and their goals, whatever mm -hmm. that might be. Um, and use, use them as just, oh, yeah. use them responsibly, help move away from them when necessary and when the timing is right. Mm -hmm. And sort of. make sure we have follow-up with these families in order to understand when it might be right to wean from some of these products, when it's no longer necessary or helpful. Um, and hopefully instill an ownership of the family that they are in control of their outcome and have all the right mm -hmm. information. So, mm -hmm. and be able to move to a point where they can just breastfeed, they can just pump and it doesn't have to be uh, so many steps and maybe mm -hmm. even influence. And I, I don't mean, well, influence other people, other of their friends, maybe about these products and their experience with it to say, you really don't need that. <laughs> um, that might be, you know, completely unnecessary if you do this, this, and this. These are mm -hmm. simpler ways to solve this problem. Um, but yeah, an understand, a basic understanding of what they are, how they may harm the Situ the the dyad the mother and the baby um, how they may improve what the restrictions might be time length restrictions um, yeah and consequences you know and some of them are positive consequences mm -hmm. you know absolutely. like absolutely you can have positive things that happen and you can have consequences that weren't even originally desired that they went yeah. into blind. Right, no. absolutely. And I love what you said about education. And also the family will have the ownership of, of deciding what what is right for them and in meeting families where they are. Uh, absolutely. Right. I, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to this presentation so much, Summer. And I know many of our viewers are here too. Thank you so very much for being here with us today, talking about everything related to lactation tools. And we look forward to seeing you at the live presentation at the Lactation Online Conference of 2024. See you soon then. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, very much. Bye-bye. And to our viewers now, some information. If you are interested in this presentation and all the other wonderful presentations that we have in the Lactation Online Conference here at GOLD, please visit goldlactation.com. And don't forget to join us for our free open access keynote that we have available and we get started live April Second, all the presentations are also recorded so you can watch them at a time that's convenient for you as well. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see you at the conference. Bye-bye everyone.